As quilters, it is such a joy to quilt for others, for anniversaries, birthdays, for family events, celebrations, for a special wedding. It's wonderful to know that that keepsake is going to be a family heirloom for years to come. But what about that quilt you want to make for yourself? What about the holiday decorations you'd love to put across your table or across the mantle or hang on the tree? When do we find time to do our own quilting? I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and you know what? You just do it. And that's what I did. I pulled all my scraps together, and I've been quilting for a couple weeks, making all kinds of fun things for home, for my home, and you can do the same thing for your home. So today what I want to show you are some adorable mug rugs. Oh my goodness, they are fantastic, and we're still using that scrappy fabric that we made so this is a fast oh and don't forget we have a bowl cozy when was the last time you've used a cozy on the table with food it's a novel idea and it goes back decades maybe even a century i don't know but they're fun to make and they look awesome so let me show you some of the things i've gotten started with here and i hope you find something that you can make for yourself or your home that you will absolutely love this is becoming quite the collection, but I love it. It is such fun. And it all centers around these fabrics that I use to make the trees. And I know there's other things too, but I just, I'm kind of losing track of it all. But check out the cozy. Oh my goodness. I love how this turned out using the scrap fabric. But check, look at this. I mean, I know they're practical and they're fun, but they're just so perfect. So you get a nice serving bowl that you can fill with vegetables. And instead of letting it get cold, you put it in a cozy so it stays warm. Look at a little place for your thumb to hold it. That just worked out perfect. And you can, you know, make it reversible. Use both sides, whatever you like, whichever is your preference. And then, of course, you know, you got to have a mug rug. Look at these. Aren't those just the sweetest things? And I love these trees. This has been a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy this. I'm going to show you how to make these, and we're going to have a great time. Particularly, how to make these to fit what you want. You know, it's not a one size fits all. It's a one size fits the same bowl for everybody. But we're going to talk about how to make modifications. We're going to talk about how to make these heat resistant so you can use the back side as a hot pad. And don't forget the super size hot pad and placemats and your table runner. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's get started right now. A bowl cozy is very easy to put together. The pattern is a square, whatever size square you want. And probably the most common that I've seen are 9 and 10 inch squares, but I'm taking it just a little bit bigger and I want to go to 11 inches. And that way I'll get a little bit wider at the bottom. And I'm going to have a inside block at 11 inches and my outside block at 11 inches. And this, of course, is my stash piece that I put together a couple weeks ago that I've been working from and doing all my Christmas pieces with this particular fabric. I love it. It just looks wonderful. And what I'm going to do is turn this over because I need to attach a piece of batting to each side. And then I'm going to quilt once it's quilted, we sew everything together, but this is not quilted in one piece. You probably could, but then you would need to put binding around the edges, and this isn't done that way. So this is done very simply, and I'm going to just go ahead. Let me get this down, make sure I have what I need where I need it. So we've got our batting here. That's perfect. And, and you see, you know, the spray base just works so wonderfully. It holds everything really nice. All right, so I'm just going to put this on top so I don't get glue where I don't want it. And do the same thing here. I'm going to do a little extra around the edges there just because I have so many seams. And I'm going to just lay this down right on the edge. 
and we don't want overhang on this. Ordinarily, when we we quilt, we have a, a piece of batting that's larger than the fabric, and that's not what we're going to do in this case. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and mark my initial line, and with my walking foot and guide, I'm going to quilt the top of this one and also my backing, which is essentially the inside of my bowl cozy. All right, so let's go ahead and get sewing and I'll show you where we go from there. My fabric squares are quilted and ready to go. You can see I've put a little bit of a radius on the corner and all I do for that is, oh, let me show you why I'm doing it first. We are going to turn this into a bowl and we're going to cinch up the bottom so that the sides come up like this and wrap around your bowl. But you see those four points, those corners, they kind of flop around. I don't want that going on. I want to be able to have a rounded corner. And, you know, I don't think those corners will fall into a bowl, but I don't like them flapping around. Um, it just seems kind of annoying to me. There we go. I have to push hard. So all I do is I mark it and then go around like that. And then once I do all four corners, we need to put some markings on our squares to make an additional little sewing line. This is called a dart. And what we're going to do is fold this in half. So I have this one done. Let me go ahead and fold this in half and show you what we're going to do. We need to take in little tucks or darts at these corners in order for our cozy to curve up. And there are a couple ideas behind it you want to think about as far as what you want to do. Um, generally, you always come up uh, an inch from the fold because that's just going to give you the lift that you need to bring those sides together. Let me get my ruler the right way. So I'm going to mark one inch up on both sides because that's where I'm going to sew. Now, the other thing I need to consider is how far in I'm going to come in. This dimension here that you're marking on your fold is going to determine how tall your bowl is or your bowl cozy is. So if I come way in like this, I'm going to have a very tall but narrow bowl. And so I'm just, generally the rule of thumb is two inches. And what did I do on here? Yeah, I did two inches here. But you can do, um, you know, try a two and a half, try a three, try a one and a half, and just see what works for you and whatever size bowls. If you're going with a larger cozy, then you may want to go ahead and, uh, you know, bring bring this in a little more. If you have like the wide serving dishes and more of a platter kind of a thing. So it's just variables that um, affect the final, the final dimension. But this is the way that you achieve that. And then what you do to get there, you know, to make it fit for you personally is just a matter of, you know, giving some consideration to what you need to do. And this is what I'm going to do. So I, I guess what I'm saying is there's no black and white rule. It's just a matter of personal preference and what works. So I'm going to go ahead and get these sewn up. I'll finish cutting these uh, corners and then we're going to be ready to put this together. This is really a quick and easy project. The darts are sewn on the four sides of each of my uh, lining and outer cover for my cozy. And what I'm just going to do real quick is trim these. And you can, you know, use the uh, ruler if you prefer, whatever's easiest for you. Um, this way you will definitely get a more accurate line. But what we're going to do is put these together and right sides together. We're going to sew them, leaving a little opening along the uh, one of the edges so that we can turn it inside out. 
then at that point we will kind of roll the edge iron it press it get it nice and flat and then do a top stitch and this baby's done uh, these go together really quick and this is a fun little um, accessory for yourself or to make as gifts make it match your tea cozies or your table runner or your super size hot pad whatever the case may be but look at these oh goodness they are just wonderful so we're going to put one inside the other like this and we want to join this up together opening these seams because there's a lot going on there with that batting and uh, sew around and we want to leave whoops I thought I had them both together we want to leave a spot open at least a couple inches um, not across here because that's really thick and not directly on the curve because it's hard to roll that over to sew so I'm thinking I'll probably do it like right about here and that should give me plenty of room in order to maneuver to flip this inside out and then we do, like I said, just the pressing and top stitching, and this is finished. It goes so quickly. All right, let's move on to the next one. And my edges are all sewn together. I left a nice opening here to turn, but what we're going to do first is clip these edges. And about every half inch, just a little snip. When you're sewing on a curve, your seam is going to want to pull in one direction or another because of the tension of that curve and the way the fabric wants to lay down. And when you're pulling it away from a curve like this, this curve is going that way and now you're going to want to turn this this way. Having these seams clipped is going to make everything fit much nicer and you'll be able to get a nice flat uh edge when we press so just go around the whole thing just like this and then we'll go ahead and turn it I've clipped around the entire edge oops looks like I missed a spot right there and you don't want to get too close to your seam obviously because that will pull out I've pressed these open and that's good to go now as far as where the opening is, don't clip here because that'll make it too hard to uh, roll that seam over when you're ready to um, sew it in. So I just take this, I just pull my first little round piece on the edge and I just take a bit at a time and just do it slowly because you don't want anything to rip or pull apart and it'll come whoops and then just once you get to this point where it's mostly through then you can turn this one kind of inside out Whoop, I can feel some of those threads coming loose I don't want to rush it here I keep dropping it there we go okay hang on to this and pull it that way it won't pull apart I haven't done one of these in a long time and then we're going to push through and get this nice and uh, what do I want to say pulled out nice and even so that we can press this and then when we press it we'll go back and we'll do our eighth inch seam but see how nice that lays when you do the clipping otherwise it can be really quite messy and you get sometimes in these corners have you ever seen where they want to pull and you've got the little creases in there that's because it's not clipped. So I'm going to go ahead and press this and uh, stitch the edges. And this baby's going to be done. We're almost there. And here we are. It looks kind of plain and simple, but check this out. You put a bowl in there, a nice serving bowl, a big soup bowl. And look at it, it just fits right around. And you've got a little bit on the edges. It makes it look really pretty. It dresses up your table but it keeps the bowl warm and it keeps your hands cool so you're not getting burned. But I also found that my little Pyrex bowl fits in here. And look at how well that works. It comes right up around the edges, so if, it's almost like a pot holder. So if I need to, you know, carry it, it's, it's going to be very easy to do. You know, fill that up with mashed potatoes or something for the holiday and you go to serve it, ah, you can't touch it, but this is great. I love this. How fun is this? 
you're going to enjoy making it. All right, so we just have to finish our mug rugs, and we are good. We're just about there. I'm really excited with how these mug rugs are turning out. And what I did, I made them a little bigger than what I made last year. These were, let's see, these were 7 by about 9. These are 8 by 10. They're just enough bigger that I think they're going to work out really well. These are sweet and adorable. I like this. And the reason that I did this differently is I also put a piece of the Instabrite inside, the uh, thermal batting that we can use in order to keep this heat resistant. So remember now, when you use the thermal batting, you need to have your thermal batting in the center with a piece of cotton batting on the top and on the bottom, and then cotton fabrics. Everything have to be has to be cotton because the polyester won't work because it could potentially melt, but we also need that cotton in order to collect any condensation that may occur due to the heat resistance against our uh, Insulbrite. So there's a whole video on that that I'll, I'll link up above so you can see. But what I've done here is made this a bit bigger and it's thicker because we have the insel bright in the uh, in the middle there. You can kind of see it has a little bit of a shinier look to it. There is no right or wrong side. You just put it in there and you're you're good to go. And the reason I did it this way is these are fun as a mug rug to put out on the table, but now we can turn them over and use them as a hot pad as well. I like that. I probably wouldn't use this as a hot pad because it's pretty, <laughs> and and this, I think, would be much easier, um, you know, to clean up after and, and not worry about. So with that being said, let me show you how I made these. And I've, I used some leftover pieces of what I've had going on with these various projects. Oh my goodness, it's been keeping me busy. And it's all about using what I had. And you can see here, if you look close, there's a seam that goes down the uh, the side here on the low volume, and there are four blocks, and these are squares that I had used pre-assembled for another project, and I happen to have four left over. So what I did is I just sewed them to other long strips that had pieces sewn together, and this all worked out really well because then I could just use these sort of combo scraps slash orphan blocks and put them together into these mug rugs. Now, you remember the table runner that I did? Um, I think that was just last week. I'm losing track. There's just so much going on. And I had these extra pieces with the strips. Remember the piano keyboarder? And so what I'm doing here is putting this together like this and then I'm using my fun fabric this here remember we put this together and I'm making these adorable little Christmas trees oh my goodness this is just going to be such a precious precious finish I'm really excited about it so what I need to do is get these pieced so we can put our applique on and what I want to show you is about how to use the uh, nylon monofilament thread, that clear thread that you can quilt with. And it's great for a situation like this where your thread is going over dark fabrics, light fabrics, because you don't know what, do I use a white fabric and it stands out here? Do I use a green fabric and it stands out here? Or do I use a monofilament that is transparent? Oh my goodness, it is fantastic stuff. So let me pull this together and I'll show you how that works. And these pieces are sewn together now. All I need to do is cut my tree. And I want to show you an easy way to come up with a tree pattern. You may or may not be able to see. I don't know if you can make out that yellow grid on the back, which is really handy because you can use that to draw your pattern. Now here, let me come over here. This would be a good spot. So what I'm going to do is I started, I've made a lot of different trees. The first one I had was nine inches by five at the base. And then this one, 
I cut off of that big tree to get the little one, and this is what's on the uh, table runner. Now, the tree that I want for my mug rug needs to be bigger than that, so I came up with a different pattern. I just want to show you an easy way to do this. Ideally, what you want to figure out is how tall you want your tree to be. And for me, I thought this is eight inches, so I'd have about an inch for my trunk and then an inch for the top space. So I wanted this to be six inches. Now this is going to finish at about four, maybe, yeah, right about four inches. So I want the base of my tree to be three inches. So here's what I did. You take a six inch piece of paper. We're going to pretend this is six. It's really only five and a half and fold it in half. Now the top is going to be, I have thread and fabric everywhere. Oh my goodness. I've got to finish these projects because I'm getting a little overwhelmed with all this stuff. Okay, so we have a center line and that's our top point. Now we know we want three inches at the bottom, so we are going to mark that right here and I'm going to measure an inch and a half on each side because that's my, whoops, let's see right there. That's my three inches. One, two, there we go, inch and a half. So I have my six inches by three inches. And then all I'm going to do is draw a line, and there it is. So this is very simple to do a very basic, primitive uh, style tree. But you know, when you've got a lot of fabric like this going on, the, the simple uh, straight cut looks awesome. I just think these are wonderful. I am in love with these trees made out of this fabric. Um, so that's it. So that's how I came up with this. And that's what I'm going to do right now is figure out just where I'm going to cut my tree. What I have discovered is that I definitely prefer the diagonal. Let me put this up here. I prefer to have my tree so it's at an angle instead of in line with the seams because then you get these straight cuts through the tree and it looks so much better when you have it set diagonally because you can see how the seams go this way. They don't go straight up and down and I just think aesthetically it's more pleasing. And I think it would be kind of fun to have some red in this tree. So I have to make sure that my steam seam 2 goes all the way to the edges because that's what I'm going to use to attach this. And I'm going to put my tree pattern right here. And I'm just going to cut alongside, just like that. And now I'm going to turn it the other direction and work down the other way. And this can be a little tricky. And usually I have a heavier pattern. This is just the piece that peeled off of the, uh, the steam seam. So I'm just going to come up here and cut this corner like that. And then I'll put my point back on so I can cut the base of my tree because there's a little corner right there that needs to come off and there we are and look at that tree and we're just going to put it right here and it's going to look wonderful oh my goodness so this is really a fun fun project I'm having a blast with this to tell you quite honestly I did get my second tree cut out, but somehow I lost you. So we're going to do it again, and I'm going to show you the proper way, because I am sure there are a number of you that were just aghast that I would do this without my ruler, because just holding the fabric in place with fingers is not a safe method at all. And so we're going to do this properly. And we'll have an extra tree that I can do something with because, you know, I just don't have enough trees yet. This is just way too much fun. 
and I'm just going to need to trim that off. Oops, I think I'm now. See, sometimes I'm glad we did this. Sometimes we, when we overcut, <laughs> we lose a little bit on that point. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of come up and find my center point. If I put this on my three, and I'm going to come into one and a half inches. So there's my center point right there. Okay, so all I have to do is come down from here to that point and from here to that point. So see, once you know how to do this, you can fix so many problems <laughs> and get, you know, get what you want out of uh, what you need. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is straighten the bottom out because you can see uh, because of the way it was cut, we need to also straighten out this angle. There we are. So now we have a cute little tree for something else. And uh, I'm sure I'll come up with something fun for that. So let's see where we are. We have our trees. Oh, and we need our trunks. I have the piece right here. And I'm just using the one inch strip that I use for the big trees and cut it in half. And that works out really well. So what I'm going to do next is sew these onto the background. And that's just a matter of doing the zigzag. And I showed you how to do that on the, uh, the last video. So I'll just do that real quick and come back and show you how it looks finished. But what I am going to do, I do need to find the center, is um, do a quilting demonstration with the nylon filament thread that I'm using for the, the bowls that we're making, our bowl cozies. But let me go ahead and do this. I can't talk and measure at the same time. Just doesn't happen. I just kind of want to get it mostly in the middle. And I'll do that one and I'll do this one while I have my little pieces before I lose them. Because little things like this disappear quickly, I'm afraid. They get lost in the pile. And every once in a while it gets a little fussy. But just do remember, you want to make sure the sticky side is on the fabric. And let's see, two inches. It's going to come just this side of the line, the seam, just like that. And then I do the same. I just take this off. And I prefer not to work in, in the big corners. When you have thick fabric, I generally come in and I make sure I rub it in just so that the adhesive sticks. Because if you have a, when you have thick fabric, it's probably because there are seams in there. And this may not um, want to stick to all those spots. Like just like here, it's getting stuck on the paper. It doesn't want to let go. So I just go ahead and put it where I want it and pull the paper back. Easier said than done. There we go. And so I'm just going to put that right on the fabric. And then I can just peel this off. And we are good to go. Whoops, I have a little bit of something right there. Let me just cut that off. Looks like something got stuck at some point. Ooh, I'm using my super sharp scissors on glue. Not a good thing. Okay, we'll put those aside. There we go. That's what's happening. Oh, we had an extra piece in there. Okay, so that's the seam allowance for the other piece that was in there. Now I understand what's going on. I'm just going to cut that off. So there was another corner there. I'll do that after because if I do it now, it's going to mess things up. We are ready to start quilting. I've got my walking foot on. I have a good sharp needle in place. I have my guide and I'll show you how we'll set that in just a moment. My lines are marked after a lot of anxious fiddling with my ruler. I got that figured out. But here's, here's the trick of the day. We are going to use some nylon monofilament thread. And I want to show you, you can just barely see it. It's, it's like a super fine hair. It's very, very thin. 
Here, let me pull the uh, clear. So it generally comes in these two colors, this smoky gray and then the clear, which is what I have in the machine. The clear you can't even see, which is why I'm showing you the gray one. And it's, it's super easy to use. You don't do anything with it that you wouldn't ordinarily do with your regular thread. And the only thing you do have to be careful of is it can stretch. So you don't want to pull yourself through as you're sewing because you may be stretching that thread. I've never had it snap, but it is possible, I would presume, that that could happen. So just let your machine do the work, the tension. I don't even have to adjust the tension on my machine. I just put the thread in like I'm using anything else, and it works great. So that's what we're using today. And you can see, I think, think maybe you can see it here on top of the green and you see how it can kind of curl up a little bit. So what I do is when I'm going to re-thread or start something new, I will loosen the tension on my machine so I can just easily pull the thread through. Otherwise, see how you get the little uh, corkscrew. So just, um, you know, just know that all you have to do is go back a couple inches and snip it, and it's nice and straight and easy to sew with. We're also going to use our guide, and I want to keep our stitching one and a half inches apart. So I'm going to get my ruler, and I'm going to set it at one and a half inches on the line, and then I'll set my guide right at the end of the ruler. And whether I'm off a little bit or not really isn't important because what's important is, is I follow the guide and that's going to keep me nice and straight. So let me go back to the beginning here. I'm going to hold my top thread so I don't get anything knotted along the way. I don't really need the guide yet because I'm going to sew along the line. And once that line is in, that's when I'll start using the guide. So let me get down to the first end here. And I did set my uh, stitch length to a 3. I, I usually sew at a 2.5, and I set it at a 3 uh, just to give me a little maneuverability, not to have the thread be too tight, because this is a lot of fabric. There's five layers in here. There we go. Our first row of quilting is finished, and I want to show you what it looks like. But notice as I'm pulling this thread out, it's nice and straight. I mean, there's there's nothing happening that I have to worry about. It's not like it's going to pull back and go through the needle. The hardest part is sometimes you can't see it when you're trying to clip it. But see how nice um, the line is? I'll show you it again when it's not next to the purple marker. But you can see the stitching, you can see the, where the needle went in, but there's no, um, no thread showing. And when you're doing this, where you're crossing over lights and darks, it's hard to find the right thread. So this is a perfect solution. So my guide is lined up here, and now I'm ready to stitch my next line. The key to this is watch your guide, not your needle. If your guide is following this stitching, your needle is going exactly where you want it to go. Just like that. You'll be surprised how quick this is to, uh, to quilt. It's a small piece. And even though we're making diamonds, this is a very easy way to quilt. Now sometimes if I have 
a fair amount of fabric on the point, I'll come back and just stitch that down just so it doesn't get flipped over or become a problem. Now I'm going to turn and go in the other direction. Again, lining my guide up on the, uh, the original stitching. I have all the stitching done in this direction. Now I'm going to come from the other direction and so in the opposite. There we go. And just follow the line just like we did before. And with that stitched, we're going to switch over and begin using our guide. This is a much easier way and a great time saver is just to mark that initial line and use your guide. It works beautifully. The key though is to keep your eye here and not on your needle. You watch your needle, it's going to waver, but keeping the guide right in place is going to make it all come out beautiful. Have you noticed these cute little teacups? We have hot chocolate with candy canes and we have coffee and there's actually little teacups with tea bags in it. Oh my goodness, it is just the cutest thing. And uh, that's from last Christmas, um, Kimberbell. That was a fun, fun fabric uh, collection to work with. So this is a spot where I'm just going to go over the corner. Just hold everything in place. And then spin it around and come right along that line again in the opposite direction. Work out to the corner and we're finished. Now that is some incredibly quick quilting. Let me go ahead and get this trimmed up and we're going to put binding on, but I am going to do the uh, radius on the corners. I'll show you the quick trick I use for that. I want to show you an easy way to do the radius. Now, um, we've done a couple already where we lay something curved, a round circle, and we do the rotary cutter directly, or we draw a line and then rotary cut on that. Now, this is my shortcut, and, you know, if you feel comfortable doing it, it works great for me. Um, but I do have to make mention here, do you see how far this little strip is? It's kind of eh, leaning. I'm not sure what happened here, but I missed that during the whole trimming thing. But anyways, we're going to keep moving on. So what I do is I decide how far I want my curve, whoops, that's not going to work, how far I want my curve to come in. And for something small like this, it's just going to be about three quarters of an inch. So I'm just going to come straight down and I'm going to measure three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to put that in all four corners. And I'll just go around like this. And the last one. Okay, now I'm just going to freehand cut it. And so what you want to do is come back about an inch and a half and you're just going to go like this and come off on that side and just kind of slowly go around and there you go and the same thing i have to find it there it is come down about an inch and a half and roll your way around now is it perfectly accurate probably not but we're going to put binding on this and it really is not something that's going to be that noticeable um, unless you get your 
your marks off because if this is in three quarters of an inch it's going to be pretty darn consistent and that's it so it's time to put borders on and we are finished with these oh my goodness they are beautiful even with the the crooked one here i think they just are wonderful all right and the silly quilting oh my goodness i'll just tell people i was practicing i wanted to see which one i liked best right have you used that line before it's a great line. It works every time.